Hey, I want to share with you one of my favorite numbers in the world. People always say, hey, Professor Berger, what's your favorite number? They think I'm going to say like three, please. This is on my top five list of favorite numbers, in fact, in the world. But it's a really complicated number. It's kind of like pi, you know, that's kind of out there and it goes on and on forever. This number starts with a two and it's 2.718 and it goes on. And I actually kind of want to show it to you so you can see it because it is really, really complicated. So in fact, let's have a look and actually see it for ourselves. Are you ready? So here we go. Here it is. There we go. It's two, and it's called E by the way, not in honor of me. You think it's in honor of me, but it's really not. It's actually in honor of Euler, a really famous mathematician. And it's 2.718281822. And the thing is, it goes on and on forever. It never ends. It'll never repeat. It will never terminate. It just goes on. It's like the little bunny. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. On. Now, why would anyone care about such a crazy, complicated number? Well, the answer is that that number really captures tremendous amount of information about growth. And we'll see lots of examples for ourselves later. But for now, I just want to celebrate this number and see that we can look at exponential functions where we have a base, e, that famous special constant. So I want us to take a look at the exponential function, f of x equals e to the x. And just to be clear, this e, while it looks a little bit strange at first, really we need to think of it like a number. It's around 2.718. It's a constant. The variable is the x. So this is really an exponential function, kind of like 2 to the x, but a lot more interesting and a lot more important. It's e to the x. So there's the variable. That's a constant. So just armed with that and a scientific calculator, you can actually produce all kinds of interesting values. For example, let's just find the values here. Take out a calculator or go online. Nowadays, you can find these calculators online now. And the way you would do this is you would hit the um, uh, E to the X button, or sometimes it's written as EXP for exponential button. And you just hit that button. And then you type in the value you want to evaluate, in this case, 3. And you type Enter. And then you see the value, which I'll just write here as 20.085. And it goes on and on and on. If you wanted to round this off, you could round it off to 20.09, for example. But that's the exact value. If you want to plug in 1, that's going to be e to the first power. Well, e to the first power is just e. And, and I just told you what that is. But let's just confirm that for ourselves and put 1 in and see what the calculator spits out. Sure enough, 2.71828. And it goes on and on and on and so forth. And you can keep typing these things in as long as you want. This is like one of those cooking shows where I did it in advance. Boom, there you go. And so you can see here are all the values. Uh, zero is kind of a famous one. If you plug in x equals zero, that's e to the zero. You know what that is, because any non-zero number to the zero power is equal to, of course, one. So that's actually straightforward. And so you can see that when you plug in large values or even modest values, the answer is pretty big. When you plug in negative values, notice that the answers get smaller, but they're always positive. Think about it. It's impossible to raise uh, the number e to a power to make it negative, because this is around 2.71 something. 2.71 to any power is always going to be bigger than 0. And that actually is kind of helpful, because I want us to take a look at the graph, what this graph looks like if we were to graph that function. You can just literally plot all these points. And what you get is a beautiful image that looks like this. This is the graph of e to the x. Check it out. It confirms with what we saw here. At 3, for example, it's huge. It's already off the chart because it goes on so long. At 1, we're at around 2.7 something. And there you can see 1, 2.7 something. It's up there. At 0, we're at 1. You can see that point. At, at minus a half, we're at about 0.6. And you can see we start dropping and dropping and dropping. And what we see here is we actually get an asymptote. This actually is asymptotic to the x-axis as you go off to the left. This has a left asymptote, if you will. But it never touches. 
it gets really, really close really fast, but it never actually touches. This is a standard a graph of an exponential function, and this is the graph of e to the x in particular. Now, armed with that, we can graph all sorts of other functions using this as kind of the, the base or given function. For example, if we want to graph p to the x, a, a p equals e to the minus x, what are we doing? We're replacing the x's by negative x's, which will literally just be a a flip, if you will, a mirror reflection over the y-axis. And so what we're going to see here is instead of having this picture, right, every x value is now going to become its opposite, and we take on the corresponding y value, so it goes like this. Whoop, noop. And so it looks just like that. That's exactly how it looks. So the graph of this is it's going to be, using the properties we've already seen, looks like this. Because a changing x to negative x just actually flips over the, the y-axis. So there's a pretty picture of that. That's the graph of p to the x equals e to the, to the minus x. So that's kind of fun. I kind of enjoy that. Now let's see what happens if we, if we change the coefficient in front of the x. So if we change the coefficient in front of the x, let's say we take a look at the function g of x equals e to the 2x. Well, you could actually plot some points, here's some points, and you can actually graph it, but let's just think about it in our own mind. What's going to happen here? As I take a, a more modest x, I'm going to actually be doubling it, so it's going to take on a value that's further out, which means this is going to get steeper faster. Correspondingly here, as I go out this way, the values are going to actually get smaller faster. So when I put a 2 to the x as the exponent on e, what's going to happen is it's going to get more extreme. It's going to get more extreme. It's going to go up faster, and it's going to come down faster. It's going to kind of be more steep in all directions. So if you plot these points, you actually see this. And you see how that's a lot more steep and dramatic than this one? This actually kind of looks mild now in, in hindsight compared to this. Really steep ascent, really steep descent, still an asymptote on the left negative um, x-axis, but you can see it's much more dramatic now because I'm increasing the x's, which means I'm going further out to find the values, but pushing them back. To, to here. So that's why this looks like that. So that's kind of cool. And let's take a look at one last example. How about combining some of these things? Let's put, let's look at r be e to the power negative x over 2. Well, the, the dividing by 2 will kind of have the opposite effect as the multiplying by 2. It's going to dampen. It's going to dampen. So at, at, at this value here, I'm actually going to look at half the value, which is much smaller. So it's going to kind of dampen it out, and it's going to dampen it here too. So it's going to go to the x-axis slower, and it's going to go to infinity this way slower. But that negative sign will flip everything. So you can graph some points. Here's some points. You can use a calculator and just actually plot them. But it's exactly what we predicted. Check it out for yourself. So first of all, it's the flip. But notice, more importantly, it's much more gradual. You see, it's a very gentle function. See, it, it's going down to the asymptote now on the positive x-axis, but it's going up much more, less dramatically than, than this one. And here, it's going off to infinity still, but it's going off much, much uh, less steep than this one. It was very, very steep and fast. That's what happens when you dampen by dividing by a constant, like 2 in this case, and the negative sign, of course, just flips it as we saw before. Lots of different ways of taking the exponential function, making it your kind of standard, fancy, fun, standard function to use, and now we can tweak it and actually create a family of graphs with the associated family of functions. The exponential function is possibly one of the most famous, one of the most important functions in all of the world. The world of science, the world of commerce, the world of economics, and the world of growth. We'll see it for ourselves, but for now, enjoy the mysterious number named after Euler, 2.71, and more importantly, enjoy graphing them. I'll see you soon.